The Dignity Act of 2023 and Why We Should Reject It A Report of Lida Reis del Futuro Avanzando The Dignity Act of 2023 is a 500-page document that hides most of the important details from people. It would once again separate families by giving preference to DACA recipients and exclude many of their family members. Individuals who signed up for it would be put on a seven-year probationary period at a cost of at least $5,000 and then apply for residency. During that period, many individuals would give up their information to the government and be deported. It also says that before anyone gets any benefit, parts of the southern border will have to be built and more agents will have to be hired. It would require the build-up of concentration camps that they call humanitarian campuses to hold individuals detained at the border. It would also force all businesses to use E-Verify to make sure undocumented immigrants without some status will be fired and therefore, self-deport. This is once again a proposal of law that divides families and sadly, undocumented immigrants fall for these lies without taking the time to read the details. A better option is the Registry Act that multiple organizations are proposing. It would allow people who have been living in the U.S. to apply for status after seven years of living in the country. This used to be the process until the early 1970s in this country. Congress can reauthorize this easily, if they wanted to. Here is a more detailed explanation of the Dignity Act that has nothing dignifying on it. This comprehensive, bipartisan bill addresses border security, border infrastructure, grants legal status to undocumented immigrants already living in the United States with the possibility of earning citizenship, establishes new pathways for asylum seekers, and creates new legal pathways for economic migrants and unaccompanied minors. Border Security Funding for border infrastructure and equipment, technology upgrades and acquisitions, research and development, and task force development. Requires you. S. Customs and Border Patrol to construct and deploy enhanced barriers where it is most effective and beneficial to establishing an operational advantage at the border. Requires you. S. Customs and Border Patrol to develop a five-year technology investment plan. Requires you. S. Customs and Border Patrol to make several essential technology upgrades including Secure communication technology, integrated surveillance systems, updates to license plate readers, and a biometric exit data system. No funding for restarting construction of the Trump border wall or similar cross-border barrier projects. Increased personnel, funding for additional U. S. Customs and Border Patrol agents and officers, incentives for retaining current workforce, increased funding for civilian Border Patrol processing coordinators, increased training, and reports and studies on current staffing models. Investments in Border Communities, codifies the newly created Shelter and Services Program to ensure that local governments and non-governmental organizations who assist arriving migrants will be able to continue providing vital services. Operational control, replaces the current definition of operational control, which is currently statutorily defined as the prevention of all unlawful entries into the United States, an unrealistic and unworkable metric that was established in the Secure Fence Act of 2006. Redefines it to operational advantage, as the ability to detect, respond, and interdict border penetrations in areas deemed as high priority for threat potential or other national security objectives. Southern Border Threat Analysis requires the Department of Homeland Security to develop an assessment of potential threats along the southern border. Northern Border Threat Analysis requires the Department of Homeland Security to develop an assessment of potential threats along the northern border. Border Patrol Strategic Plan requires the Department of Homeland Security to develop a plan regarding security enhancements for our international borders, security gaps at ports of entry, information sharing improvements, situational awareness and human trafficking prevention efforts, an assessment of training programs, and information relating to staffing requirements, the plan will be updated every two years. Ports of Entry Infrastructure Funding for expansion-$10 billion over five years, and requires DHS to expand and modernize ports of entry, including to expand vehicle, cargo, and pedestrian inspection lanes. Additional funding, establishes the Immigration Infrastructure Fund to ensure funding for necessary infrastructure, personnel, and costs of the newly created Dignity Program. Legal Status for Undocumented Individuals Dignity Program, creates the Dignity Program and the Dignity Legal Status. 
dignity status would grant undocumented people in the United States legal status, along with work and travel authority, and grant them a permanently renewable legal status for as long as they meet criteria. This could bring up to 11 million undocumented people out of the shadows. Participation in the program would require dignity beneficiaries to pay $5,000 over the course of seven years, the duration of the program, as well as pass a criminal background check, pay any outstanding taxes, and begin or continue paying taxes. Certified Agricultural Worker creates a renewable legal status for undocumented agricultural workers. Creates an opportunity for long-term agricultural workers to adjust to legal permanent resident status after a certain number of years working in an agricultural setting. Pathways to Citizenship Dreamers, the Dream and Promise Act Keeping Families Together, the American Families United Act Redemption Program, a secondary five-year program available to Dignity recipients at the end of the initial seven-year Dignity Program. Participants must complete additional requirements. Upon completion, recipients would be eligible to apply for citizenship. Military Service, Dignity recipients within enlistment age have the option of enlisting in the armed forces and pursing their citizenship through service if they so choose. Asylum Reform Regional Processing Centers in Key Latin American Countries Dash Directs for the construction of five facilities in Latin America to offer services to potential asylum seekers or economic migrants. These will offer pre-screening for asylum eligibility. If found eligible for asylum, they will be issued a humanitarian visa with which they will be authorized to travel to the United States to have their claim adjudicated. Migrants will be able to apply for guest worker visas, H-2A and H-2B, and assess their eligibility for other legal pathways. Humanitarian campuses in the United States provide a screening process to determine whether an asylum seeker meets the standard for credible fear through a credible fear interview. The credible fear interview will be administered within the first 15 days of arrival, but not before a 72-hour rest period and after having an opportunity to consult with legal counsel. Following an establishment of credible fear, asylum seekers will have their asylum case determined by an asylum officer within 45 days. Asylum officers may refer cases to immigration judges if they are too complex to resolve within the 45-day window. Those who are unable to establish credible fear will be removed. Opportunity for review. Asylum seekers may request a secondary review of their final determination, which must be completed within seven days. Migrants who are part of vulnerable groups may request reviews to be referred to an immigration judge for a final decision. Additional asylum officers directs the Department of Homeland Security to have no less than 500 asylum officers available across humanitarian campuses to determine asylum cases. Family reunification creates an expanded reunification program for minors, similar to the Central American Minors Program, for children and young adults under the age of 21 with a parent or guardian in the United States who holds legal immigration status, such as dignity status. Loan Repayment Program authorizes a new federal loan repayment program for lawyers serving at humanitarian campuses. E-Verify Implements E-Verify through the Legal Workforce Act and gradually phases in the required use of E-Verify for businesses. As opposed to previous measures requiring E-Verify, the Dignity Act grants undocumented individuals in the country legal status, including work authorization, which would be implemented alongside E-Verify to ensure an even and fair transition without adversely impacting immigrant workers. Addressing Visa Backlogs and Caps Backlogs, cuts the visa backlog to a maximum of 10 years, meaning anyone that has been waiting for a legal visa, either family-based or employment-based, for 10 years or more, calculated by priority date, will be provided that visa. Creates an immigration agency coordinator position to oversee immigration functions at United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, the Department of State, and the Department of Labor. Provides $2.56 billion to the operations and support account at United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, $852 million to the Bureau of Consular Affairs and Visa Service at the U.S. Department of State and $225 million to the Office of Foreign Labor Certification at the U.S. Department of Labor. Raising Visa Caps, the per-country cap set in the Immigration Act of 1990, from 7% to 15%. Under current law, 
no country can receive more than 7% of the total number of employment-based or family-sponsored preference visas each year. Protects children from aging out of visas due to delays, ensures that children legally present in the United States do not age out of receiving certain visas due to processing delays. Specifically, it guarantees they receive visas they are eligible for, even if they grow out of the age of eligibility, if processing delays by United States Citizenship and Immigration Services were the reason they did not receive a visa in time. Guest Visa Reform Visa Security improves visa security by expanding Immigration and Customs Enforcement's visa security units to the 75 most high-risk posts worldwide, enhances counterterrorism vetting and screening, provides additional training to you. S. Customs and Border Patrol and Immigration and Customs Enforcement International Posts, and establishes the Visa Security Advisory Opinion Unit to respond to specific security-related requests. Visa Overstay Reporting mandates that DHS issue a visa overstay report for the previous fiscal year to the appropriate Congressional Oversight Committees. New visa for certain foreign visitors, through the Temporary Family Visitation Act, creates a new 90-day visitor visa that can be used by foreign visitors to travel to the United States for business, pleasure, or family purposes to any foreign visitor who has family members who are legal permanent residents of the United States or you. S. Citizens. F. Visas slash student visas, this changes F student visas to be dual intent. Worker Visa Reform H-2B program, exempts returning workers from any one of the three previous fiscal years from counting against the cap, ensuring that small and seasonal businesses can fulfill their labor needs. Improves the application process and requires the Department of Labor to maintain a publicly accessible online job registry. H-2A program, makes the program available to both season and year-round agricultural employers, opening up the program to dairy and other year-round agricultural sectors to participate. Allows additional industries to participate in the H-2A program, including forestry-related occupations, cider pressing, aquaculture, fish or shellfish processing, and equine management. H-4 program H-4 Work Authorization Act allows the spouses of H-1B immigrants to automatically be granted work authorization upon receiving their H-4 visa. It removes the requirement for visa holders to apply for a Form I-765, Employment Authorization Document, which can take considerable time to be approved. Pilot Program for Portable H-2A Visa requires the Department of Homeland Security, in consultation with Department of Labor and USDA, to establish a six-year pilot program authorizing portable H-2A status for up to 10,000 H-2A workers. Spouses and children of lawfully admitted permanent residents, exempt spouses and minor children of lawful permanent residents from current family preference green card caps set in the Immigration and Nationality Act. A report of Lideres del Futuro, 